General Mills, makers of Corn Kicks, bring you Curtain Time. Once again, it's Curtain Time. And tonight, we present a comedy about three happy-go-lucky, daffy, wacky, breezy Broadway hoofers who just wouldn't admit vaudeville was a vanishing career. A -a laugh-a-minute premiere on Curtain Time, Over the Falls. Now, a hush is falling over the tense, expectant audience which fills our playhouse. And again, we await that most thrilling moment in the theater, curtain time. Remember, this play is presented for your entertainment by General Mills, makers of America's brand new cereal sensation, Corn Kicks, K-I-X. In the remaining few seconds before curtain rise... Let's take a quick look through tonight's playbill. Our play, Over the Falls, was written for curtain time by Richard Hanser and stars two of radio's favorite comedy leads, Louise Fitch and Dolan Soule. The orchestra is under the baton of Henry Weber and the production is directed by Blair Walliser. But now the house lights are being dimmed, Mr. Weber steps to the stand for the overture and the show is on. curtain is parting on the first scene of Over the Falls, set in a cheaply furnished room of a theatrical hotel in Buffalo, New York. It's nearly noon, but Max Barton and his partner, Benny Tyson, are still in bed asleep as the phone rings. Hey, Max. <clears throat> Wake up, will you? Answer the phone. Oh, huh? Phone, phone, phone. Oh, the phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hello? Yeah, this is me. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. Huh? The joint's folded. Are oh, you clowning? Oh, you can't do that to us. We'll sue. Oh, yeah? Is that so? Well, the same to you. I don't know who that was, but I'm sure it wasn't the guy who notified you when you win the sweepstakes. Uh, You're right, it wasn't, Benny. It was bad news. That nightclub we were supposed to open in tonight has been closed by the cops. You mean we're at liberty? Yeah, at liberty is right. Well, that's what our forefathers fought for, liberty. Now we've got plenty of it. Yeah. Our first job in six months, and they pull it right out from under us. We'll probably starve. Yeah. Patrick Henry with a new twist. Liberty and death. You kill me with those comical cracks. Here we are with no dough and no prospects, and you make jokes. Okay, Mac, okay. Well, we might as well break the news to Bibi and then decide what we're going to do. Yeah, I guess so. Hello? 
Give me Miss Baby LaBelle in room 611. Yeah. Hello, Baby. This is Mac. Yeah, listen, Baby, come down here right away, will you? I got something important to tell you. No. No, Baby, don't bring your dancing shoes. No, we're not going to rehearse. Goodbye. She thought we was going to rehearse for tonight, Benny. We've had plenty of practice for what we're going to do tonight. <clears throat> what? Nothing. You know what worries me about this whole thing, Benny? Uh, what worries me most, I mean. What? Well, I'm afraid B.B. will go back to Maisie's basement like she threatened to do. A return engagement at the Notion Scounder? Well, what's so tough about that? A solid 52-week book and a no-sleeper jump. Uh, they're going to give her any billing? Oh, quit clowning, Benny. I want Baby to stick in show business with me. We got a great act if we can only get it going, and we need her. And besides... Besides, you love her, and you can't hold her hand over an ocean counter. Yeah. Well, just as long as you're... So oh, that's Baby now. Hmm. Come in. Hello, boys. What's new? Hello, Baby. Oh, what's the matter, boys? Is something wrong? That sums it up pretty well. Yeah, everything's wrong. Baby, you know that job we got? Yeah. Well, we ain't got it. Huh? No job? Well, they can't fire us. They ain't even seen our act yet. That's the novelty twist. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> this time we get fired before they see our act. Now, the act's got nothing to do with it. We got no job because the nightclub where we were supposed to work has been closed. Well, of all the mean things. Uh, things was different in the old days on the RKO time. Yeah. We'll be lucky to get on the WPA time. <laughs> If we was only back in Vaudeville. But, Mac, there ain't any Vaudeville no more. We specialize in being in things there ain't any of. <laughs> you know, this is worse than that time in Peoria when I was with Mr. the Magician. The sheriff closed the house and we didn't get paid off. We had to eat two of Mr.'s rabbits. Was you with Misto? Sure, sure. Misto taught me all he knew. Well, when he broke up the act, he gave me a momentum to remember him by that trunk over there. What's in it? Oh, wigs and props and false whiskers, all that stuff. Well, you better get out all the false, wh false whiskers you've got. We're going to need them to scram out of this hotel. Oh, gosh, that's another worry. We ain't got a dime, have we? Yeah, we got a dime. But this is one of those classy joints where the rate is two bits. Yeah. <laughs> the crime a class act like ours has to starve to death on this honky-tonk circuit? If we could just get a vaudeville date... Oh, forget it. Let's just sit around on a monument and wait for television. Ain't there any vaudeville left no more? Well, some theaters have still got stage shows. But you can't get a booking unless you're a name band or have shot your wife or done something popular like that. Well, I'd be glad to shoot my wife. <laughs> if I could find her. Well, what a terrible thing to say, Benny. How awful. She certainly was. I think a man and their wife ought to be friends. Oh, you're an idealist. Well, I feel like B.B. You don't look like her. <laughs> no, Benny, I mean I feel like she does about a man and their wife ought to be friends. We've been engaged a long time now, and if we ever get married, I'm going to love her in spite of it. Oh, gee, B.B. I feel like a crumb stalling you off so long. But a man can't ask a girl to marry him unless he's got some scratch. Maybe i better go back to Macy's. You go back? No. Now, now, baby, now, don't say that. Now, I'll think of something. Oh, if I could only get a vaudeville date, we'd be all set. I know how you can get a vaudeville date. How? Huh? Well, you just said it yourself. Do something sensational. Yeah, but how can you be sensational in Buffalo? Well, you've heard of Niagara Falls, haven't you? Yeah. Well, there's your answer. Go over the falls in a barrel. Why, you'll have to comb contracts out of your hair. If you live. <laughs> hey, you got something there, Benny. Think of the publicity. Oh, Mac, you're clowning. I'd be on the front page of every newspaper in the country. Page one, Billy. Hey, stop talking that way. Benny, make him stop. We get offers from all over the country. Oh, now, cut it out, Mac. I was only kidding. You can't go over the falls in a barrel. Why not? It's our only way out, Benny. Well, it'll put us into the chip. You'll get drowned, Mac. Well, that's better than starving to death. I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to notify the papers. Think of them headlines on page one. So long, kid. Mac. He's going to do Mac, it. come back. And, uh, Mac goes out to 
put his scatterbrained inspiration into effect. The curtain comes down on the first act of Over the Falls. Tonight's production of Curtain Time. You know, it certainly is amazing how different things are today from what they used to be. Remember how it used to be with foods? If nature hadn't provided certain vitamins or minerals, you just didn't get them. If they were missing in certain foods as prepared, you just went without, and that was just about all there was to it. Used to be that way with corn cereals, too. Now, corn cereals have always been a fine source of valuable food energy, but they've always lacked certain vital food elements. Well, we found a way to change this. For the first time in history, we have combined four extra food elements into a corn cereal in that brand new breakfast food, Corn Kicks. K-I-X. Yes, we have specially developed corn kicks to give you a combination of real, honest-to-goodness nourishment that no corn cereal ever offered before. In addition to valuable food energy, in kicks you get vitamins B and D, and also those two important minerals, calcium and phosphorus. And, of course, well-rounded nourishment is only half the story. You'll find that corn kicks is different in many other ways from anything else you ever had before in your life. Why, it doesn't even look like any other cereal. It's not flakes. It's not shreds. Corn Kicks comes in crisp, round, tempting bubbles of golden corn. And these round bubbles stay so genuinely crisp in milk or cream, too. Crisper than any ordinary flat flake cereal on the market. It's Kicks, remember. K-I-X Kicks. on the second act of our play. It's a few minutes later in the office of W.E.X. Merton, drama critic for the Morning Herald. Merton is laboriously tapping his way through a maze of typewriter keys when he hears a knock on his door. Come in. Hello. Hello. You're W.E.X. Merton, a theatrical editor, aren't you? That's right. Oh, my name is Mac Barton. You may have heard of me. Uh, I don't quite... Yeah, you gave my turn a nice plug in your column once. It was about eight years ago when we played The Strand. I always meant to drop in and thank you. Oh, not at all. What are you doing now? Well, I'm playing the nightclub circuit, but I got a little piece of news I think you might use. I'm going over the falls in a barrel. Huh? What's the gag? Oh, no gag. I got to do something. I got to get a break. The only break you'll get from that stunt will be in the neck. Oh, I don't know. Other guys has done it. I'll get a good strong barrel. Now, listen. If you're really serious about this thing, let me give you some advice. Now, I don't want advice, Mr. Merton. I want publicity. I got my gal to think about. My fin and say. Huh? What's that? You're going over the falls for your girlfriend? Yes, sir. We want to get married, and this is the only way we can get our act booked. Yeah, a romance angle. Might make a yarn at that. Pull up a chair and speak your piece, Barton. Looks like we've got something here. I never hear of such foolishness. But, Mr. Baumgartner, think of the publicity. We'll get your name in all the papers. Listen, my name in the papers, I don't care about. All I want is I should sell more beer. Sure. That's just the point. You'll sell more beer, a lot more. I'll paint Baumgartner's beer on my barrel, and I'll get everybody talking about it. 
Then they'll come flock into your beer garden, and they'll naturally order the famous Baumgartner beer, and all I ask is $500 and a good strong barrel. That is all foolishness. That are crazy strong. Yeah, well, now listen. I'll lower the price because I'm in a hurry. I'll do it for $200 and the loan of a truck to haul the barrel and the rest of my stuff to the falls. Now, how about it? I would... $200 is too much. Well... I risk my neck and you get a million dollars worth of free advertising and you call 200 bucks too much? Okay. I'll go to somebody that recognizes a great opportunity when he sees it. Yeah, and so who will pay for such a crazy stunt? Zimmerman's Brewery. That's who. They'll snap it up. And you'll feel pretty bad when you see Zimmerman's Barrel in all the newspapers and everybody talking about Zimmerman's beer. You won't be able to give your beer away. Goodbye. Goodbye. Give my money. Him, I'm on. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I, I look, uh, I, uh, I couldn't afford more, but, uh, well, uh, uh, maybe for a uh, hundred dollars. And the barrel and truck? The barrel I give you. The truck is just loaned. Yeah. And, and 100 bucks cash on the line? Well, that is all foolishness, but, ah, yeah, I give you the money. Okay, Mr. Baumgartner, it's a deal. <laughs> It says Mac is going over the falls in a barrel. Yeah, I read it. The paper says no trace was ever found of the last man who went over the falls in a barrel. Oh, Benny, you simply got to stop him. Well, what can I do, baby? Besides, the cops won't let him do it. They're very jealous about who uses their falls. It's a public attraction. Come in. Hello, kid. Mac. Welcome home, stupid. Where have you been? And never mind where I've been. It's where I'm going that counts. I'm heading for Niagara Falls. Oh, you can't do it, Mac. I won't let you. Nah, nah, don't you worry about me, honey. Now, everything's all set. I even got a sponsor and a truck to haul our stuff to the falls. Mac Barton, unless you drop this crazy idea right now, you know what I'm going to do? Baby, you're not going yes, back to... Yes, I'm going back to Macy. Oh, honey, have a heart. It's our big chance. You can't run out on me now. Hey, what kind of a girl are you? Here I am at the crossroads of my career, and you want to quit on me. I'm going to feel pretty bad all alone in that barrel if you ain't on the shore pulling for me, honey. Well... You won't let me down, will you, honey? I wish you wouldn't do it, Mac, please. Yeah, there, there now. Now, you just go up to your room and get ready, baby. We got no time to lose. My barrel takes off at daybreak. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll go if you say so, Mac. But I'll have to pack. It won't take me long. Yeah, goodbye, honey. Make it fast. All right, now, bright boy. What's a gag? You can't pull a stunt like this. Now, don't start lecturing me, Benny boy. I got things to do, and I'll need your help. Yeah. Right, now, first off, give me a hand with that trunk. Well. No, 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 not that one. The one with Miss Doe's name painted on it. Run into a schoolier job than this since I joined the falls. Pinch him a guy for wanting to go over the falls. <laughs> if he wants to go over, let him go, is what I say. Well, here's the barrel, all right. Yes, they look, Lieutenant. It's got Baumgartner's beer painted on it. Yeah, that lot of advertising Baumgartner's beer will get out of this stunt. We'll have to nab that crackpot just as soon as he shows up. Well, now it'll be doing him a favor at that as well, as well. This barrel had smashed to pieces the first rocket hit. Yeah, it wouldn't have a chance. Say, hey, what was that now? Did, 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 did you hear that splash? Yes, sure, I heard it all right. It sounded hey, like... Say, wait a minute. I see something over there in the water. Yeah, I see it too now. It looks like a trunk. It is a trunk. And it's floating down the river toward the fall. Why, that bum, he gave us a slip. Hey, there. Hey, you! Come on, back here! Hey, there he goes! He's in the trunk! He's on the edge! Look, he's on the edge of the fall! There it goes! There it goes! It's over! Hello? Hello? Sit at the desk, please. Yeah. Joe? This is McConnell on the fall story. Yeah? Yeah, Barton went over the falls all right, but not in a barrel. Now, get this. He went over in a trunk, on the level. Yeah? Yeah, he knew the cops were watching his barrel, so he let him watch it. He climbed in the trunk, and his partner pushed it into the water. Yeah? Yeah, I'm sure he was in it. 
I saw him get in myself. Okay, Joe. I'm going down to the foot of the falls now and see if they find any trace of him. Huh? No, there's not a chance in the world that he came out of it alive. Now, stop worrying, B.B. Mac will turn up, okay? You wait and see. There's so much mist I can't see. And those awful rocks he smashed up on him, I know he did. Oh, man. No, he didn't know he didn't. Of course, the trunk missed the rocks, I think. Uh, Benny, Benny, look over there in that whirlpool. Hmm? It's a piece of the trunk. It's been smashed a bit. Oh, Benny. over the apparently disastrous outcome of Mac's publicity stunt marks the second act ending of Over the Falls, tonight's production on Curtain Time. If you're the kind of a person who enjoys new plays like this and all the smart new things that life has to offer, here's something that you'll most certainly want to hear. Now, you've probably often thought that it would be a wonderful thing if someone would only bring out a new breakfast cereal that had a really different flavor and at the same time contained extra food values. Because then you'd be sure your family would like it, and you'd know that at the same time it was giving them certain food values they need. Well, if you've ever had these thoughts, let me urge you to try corn cakes. This brand new ready-to-eat corn breakfast food has a new distinctive flavor that thousands of families are going for in a really big way. It tastes different from anything else they ever had before. And as for crispness, well, these tiny golden bubbles have been proved to stay crisper in milk or cream than any ordinary flat flake cereal on the market. But flavor isn't the whole story of kicks. As I told you, it contains a combination of food values not found, so far as we know, in any other well-known corn cereal. Corn kicks contains vitamin B, which helps promote appetite and growth. And there's vitamin D, the wonderful sunshine vitamin. And corn kicks contains calcium and phosphorus, important minerals that help build sturdy bones and sound teeth. Now, honestly, isn't this just the very cereal you've been waiting for? All right, ask your grocer for kicks tomorrow morning. That's spelled K-I-X, kicks. <laughs> on the third act of Over the Falls. It's an hour later, and the crowd at the foot of the mighty Niagara Falls has dwindled, as there's no further sign of Mac. A few reporters and photographers still linger, however, and we hear one of them say, Well, that's some drop, believe me. What a sap he was to pull a stunt like that. Yeah. I feel sorry for that doll of his, too. The way she comes wandering around here, hoping that it'll turn up safe and sound after all. Yeah. It's been a good hour since he went over, and there's not a sign of him yet. Hey, here she comes now. She's walking with Barton and Barton's partner. His name's Benny, I think. Mm. Uh, pardon me, miss. Yeah? What do you want? Hey! Help! Hey, what was that? Oh, somebody's calling for help! Hey, I want to hey, shoot coming you. from down. Please. It sounded like men! I think I see somebody down there. Well, come on! Oh, come hey, on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There he is over there! It's him! He's hanging onto a rock. Come on, grab him! Oh, Mac! Mac! 
Look at you. Let me out of here, somebody. Grab my hand. Yeah, here, mine too. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's good to be on dry land again. Oh, are you all right, honey? Are you hurt? No, I'm all right. I'm shaking a little. I'll be... Oh. Grab him, he's collapsing. Oh. Set him down until he gets his breath. Oh, Mac, darling. Oh, it me. What a picture. Hold it. What a shot. Uh, and now, gentlemen, I'd like to make a statement for the press about my trip over the falls. Gee, you know, Benny, it's good to be back in this hotel room. Yeah. That water was kind of chilly. Oh, oh, you look like a drowned rat when we hauled you out. Yeah. <laughs> The paper's out yet? Oh, I sent a bell hop after some. I wonder what kind of notices I'll get. Well, the critics will probably say you were great, but was it art? Mm. Come in. What? Phoebe, where are you going? I just come to say goodbye. I'm leaving the act. Leaving the act? act? Yeah, I just come to say goodbye. I'm going back to Macy's. Oh, quit clowning, honey. Now, give Papa a kiss. I ain't clowning. I'm leaving. But, sweetheart, you can't leave. We're going to get married. That's just it. I don't want to be married to no man that would go around risking his life without no thought for his future wife. If you go over the falls when I'm watching you, what'll you do when I turn my back? <laughs> I'm leaving. Should I tell her, Mac? Yeah, 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 might as well. Okay. Close that door, baby. Why? What's yeah. up? Well, we don't want anybody to hear this but you. You see, baby, it's this way. Mac never went over those falls. What are you trying to give me, Benny? On the level, honey. He no more went over them Niagara Falls than I did. But didn't I, with my own very eyes, see him get into that trunk? And didn't I see you push it off into the river? And didn't I see him pulled out of the gorge? What are you trying to hand me anyway? Sure, you saw all that, and so did everybody else. But I wasn't in the trunk when Benny pushed it in the water. Huh? Now I done my old disappearing act. That trunk of Miss Doe's had a trap door in the bottom. Well, I just saw another trap door in that wooden platform we had the trunk on. I crawled out of the trunk and under the platform before Benny pushed the trunk into the water. Then I sneaked my phony beard on and took the elevator down to the gorge, climbed down into the edge of the water and hollered for help. So you see, he didn't risk a thing for you and would therefore make a good husband. Oh, you beast. To think that you would do all this and not let me in on it. Let me worry. Let me think you was really killed of all the low, mean... Low, mean, low, mean. Despicable. Yeah, of all the tricks to play on a girl who you claim you love, that's about the the lowest and meanest. Goodbye. Benny, she's gone. Yeah. That means we'll have to quit advertising our act as a gala girly show. I can't understand, women. That makes you unique. When you think you've done something to make them happy, you find out it doesn't make them happy at all. Oh, it's a low, mean... Low, mean, low, mean trick. Yeah. It's funny how life is, Benny. Yesterday I was broke. No job, no prospects, but I had a gal. Now I'm sitting on top of the world, but Phoebe is gone and all my wealth and fame don't mean a thing. Oh, I was once in a worse spot than you are. My wife and wealth both left at the same time. <laughs> Phoebe! There's a big man downstairs. He's mad as can be, and he's looking for yeah? you. Keeps hollering about money. Oh, that's probably some theatrical agent that wants to sign me up at a princely figure. Well, I'll get down and see about it. Sweetheart, it was wonderful of you to want to protect me after being mad and all that. Well, I wasn't really mad, Mac. I was just hurt because you made me worry so. And now that you're back, nothing will ever come between us. Oh, no, honey. Nothing will ever make us quarrel again. And we'll get married and go to Bermuda on our honeymoon. Let's go to Hawaii. Our Bermuda's nicer, honey. It's not as nice as Hawaii. Why, Bermuda's much better, darling. I said Hawaii, dear. But, hey, what the... What yeah, the... hey, he is officer. The thief got no good, that schwindler. You will try him at once with a bond for your hand. Now, Mr. Bongard, now, look. What did I do? What did you do? What did you do? You bamboozled me out of a hundred dollars without you were using my bow. But now, now you are going to sail, you are going now, to... Now, now, just a minute, Mr. Bongard. Uh, will you let me finish what I've been trying to tell you? Mac would be very happy to square everything by playing his first engagement at your beer garden. Very. At the usual fee. Yeah. 
so now we are talking sense. But me and Baby was going away on a honeymoon to Bermuda. Hawaii, I said. Now, oh, Baby. Don't I... argue, kids. It's huh? all settled. You're spending your honeymoon in America's honeymoon paradise. Where's that? What do you mean? Niagara Falls, kid. Right here in good old Niagara Falls. <laughs> Tonight's production on Curtain Time. Starred in tonight's play were Olin Soule as Max, Louise Fitch as D.B., Ken Christie in the role of Benny, Roger Van Slyke playing the lieutenant, George Nisey as the reporter, and Charles Calvert in the part of Tom Gardner. And now a curtain call for the entire cast. a moment now, we're going to hear about next week's moving story of the war from the director of Curtain Time, Blair Walliser. But first, let me remind you to be sure to try Kicks, the new cereal that comes not in flakes or shreds, but in brand new bubbles of tempting golden corn. There's really no other cereal quite like it. Just ask your grocer for Kicks, K-I-X, and do it tomorrow morning. Then you can enjoy this unusual treat for breakfast this weekend. And now, here's Blair Wallace. Yes, next week we're going to do a war story. But not the usual sort of war story. There aren't any shells bursting or airplanes roaring. No tramping feet. No brass bands. You see, this is a story of a lad named Danny who blew on a toy trumpet and wanted to be a soldier. And one day, he really did play soldier. And the story of Danny from childhood to manhood makes one of the most deeply human, moving plays we've had on Curtain Time in many weeks. So next week, we give you the other side of war in Toy Trumpet. <laughs> Selection street scene and Metropolis heard on this program are by Alfred Newman and Ferdy Grothay. Another production of Curtain Time will be brought to you next Friday night at this same time.